Alright, so our research is on break and inspect and our solution or potential solution will be focused on whitelisting. Uh, our group members include Christopher Guterri, who's sitting over there offering the slides because we don't have a clicker, uh, Matthew Acosta, uh, myself Wong, and Joe DeRocha. Um, so this is a research question that we are um, faced with and after taking a look at it, we found this topic to be very interesting, so we decided to go on with the topic. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, I'll just go over the introduction to see why this question is so important, why a solution would be very ideal, and how this would save uh, the organization and business. So every organization uh, is faced with a lot of data, whether it's data about your sales, your company growth, maybe a new product you're going to launch, or just any kind of sensitive information that you would never want any other people to know, you know, whether it's competitors or just any other business. Because, of, like, for example, if they, they see your sales data and they see that it's very, very low, they could take advantage of that. Or maybe there's a new product you want to launch, but then the competitors got access to your data somehow and they use that data and be like, oh, we can replicate that and create the same thing and then launch it earlier. And then when, once they launch it, we would just be seen as an organization who's copying what they're doing. Um, so of course, you don't want anyone to access your data, whether it's sales or whether it's uh, product launches, but also like employee information. There's social security numbers that you don't want other people to find out, health records. There's so many data that are considered sensitive. So what you need to do with this data is to encrypt it in a way that only the people that are allowed to see it or should see it will be able to see it. So this encryption would make it um, in a way that you can't read it and then only people that are able to, should be able to have access to it would have a key to um, access this encryption and decrypt it so that you can see what the uh, document has in store. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is what it would ideally it would be, look like if um, if any plain text, if any document, any file is encrypted. This is what it would look like. So basically, they're just changing, like say a word like um, sales. It would change sales at the S to an A, an S to maybe a question mark, an A to a W. So just in a way that you were not able to see and understand it. This is exactly what it should look like. If anyone who tried to access the file, they would just go to this certain file and they would just look at this like, what? What is this? This could be like very sensitive information about a new product. But if you look at this, you're like, okay, this is got just random words and numbers. This would mean nothing to me. So um, and how would we access this data and give it to the right kind of person who are able to see it? Well, after some research, we're able to find out some solutions, homophobic encryption and other forms of encryption, but we feel like whitelisting is the best uh, and most efficient solution to this. And uh, Matt, Matthew Acosta will talk next about whitelisting and go into further details about it. So now that we know um, what exactly our topic is and what we're talking about, we're gonna go a little bit more into detail as to what these things are. So I'm gonna start off with break and inspect. Um, pretty much what break and inspect is, is I myself would send um, a document to someone else um, as the document is being transported, there will be basically a middleman who would inspect the um, encrypted file to make sure that the file is okay. And then once they inspect it, they would then send it off to the um, person B who would then get the file and go on to see what the document is. And then, go the next slide. And then um, the main uh, second thing that was really important is whitelisting. So um, what whitelisting is, is pretty much all files are, um, so every, nobody has access to things um, except there's only a set amount of things that are, you would be able to have access to opposed to blacklisting where there's access to everything and then there's certain things that are um, restricted. So for example, um, if you work in a company, typically blacklisting is used um, only CEOs would have access to certain files while a regular employee would not have access. Um, but that's the very um, special limitation um, which is different from blacklisting and whitelisting. Um, and then, um, 
So after conducting all this research uh, between blacklisting, whitelisting, uh, break and inspect, um, various topics related to break and inspect and whitelisting, uh, we spoke to our mentor Terry and he gave us a lot of different uh, words of advice to move forward with this project. And um, we also met with Sanjay. Uh, during his meetings, we spoke about different things to do as well. And we decided to conduct an experiment, which Joe will talk more about. All right, so here's how our experiment it was going to happen. Our experiment essentially involved taking a encrypted text that will be written through code. That code will have instructions on going through a firewall and within that firewall will be an embedded whitelist and that whitelist will contain the IP address of a Apache server. Keep in mind though there will also be one, there will be two Apache servers and if our experiment proves right that text will then go through the firewall and the firewall since it has the whitelist will then send it off to the Apache server that has the same, that has the IP address in the whitelist. So the script will be written in Python as I previously mentioned. It will have instructions on where to go, directing it towards the firewall, as well as instructions on carrying this encrypted text through it. The firewall will use PFSense software as in our experiment to conduct it properly will involve virtual machines will, will involve on a virtual machine I'm sorry and involve on three computers one of the computers will have the code that will be all written on in Python that can be written in notepad, notepad, notepad++ plus plus, whether, whatever text document may be and as mentioned previously PFSense can also be upgraded and add new functions towards it so in, or in this case the function this upgrade shall be the embedded whitelist into it. And uh, as mentioned previously before, that whitelist will contain the IP address of one of two Apache servers. And a little background on Apache servers. They are free open source web servers that you can download from the internet and place into any type of working environment, or so in our case, a virtual machine. Since we'll be using two Apache servers, that's why you need three computers. One of the computers I already previously mentioned will involve typing out the code and then executing it through the firewall within the virtual machine. The two other computers will also be connected to the same virtual machine and they'll both have Apache servers installed on them. And if our experiment proves correctly, the computer that has the Apache server with the IP address matching the one in the whitelist will then appear that text that we sent through the firewall will appear in that computer. So we will prove that the whitelist was able to correctly send out the text, encrypted text, to that proper patch server in that computer and it will be seen there, as opposed to the other computer which will have nothing. And now I'm going to switch over to Chris to explain the outcomes of our results of our research. So hi there everyone. So for when we were conducting the experiment, we actually found that there was a lot of issues that we weren't going to know until we actually started on this experiment, which is that we didn't have the technical expertise to be able to fully conduct this experiment. However, through our research and our information that we acquired through this project, as well as um, the research we use, including professors and online um, resources, we found that we believe we would know what would happen if our experiment had been conducted. So going off of the fact that we believe we know if uh, what would have happened based on that, if we had the technical expertise, we can actually look to the next slide, which says that we believe that this experiment would have actually have succeeded in what we were conducting. We wanted to make sure that the Apache server was going to separate the information from the two uh, virtual machines, so that way we had um, one of them receive the information and the other one not. And what's great about that is compared to blacklisting and other forms of breaking and inspecting, it's actually a lot cheaper and a lot more effective, um, as well as it's less taxing on the server, which is huge, because for in this current world, if we are putting too much um, pressure onto a server, we could actually cause a lot more issues by breaking and inspecting stuff. As well as this allows us to make sure we can IP address 
whitelist people, which is great because it allows um, people to get the information they need, but make sure that they are the correct people who are getting it. So if you continue on to the next slide, actually, you'll also be able to see that breaking inspect also is a lot um, less problems on the overall server like I was talking about, where if you were to go in and break and inspect normally, it would create a lot of uh, stress on the server through bottlenecking, where multiple people are trying to access the information uh, on the service uh, while you are breaking and inspecting uh, it, so it causes a lot of issues and problems where people are trying to access information they may need, but they can't get to it because of the bottleneck. However, because of whitelisting, you won't ever really be experiencing bottlenecking because only the people that you want access will have access. That is the only way people will get access is by you giving it to them. Uh, compared to blacklisting, which is blacklisting people you don't want to have access to stuff. Um, lastly, we believe this is the most efficient form of breaking inspect, like I was saying before, because it is the most cost effective and the most time efficient, which is super important when you come down to a big company or something like that and you're trying to whitelist data like this. So if you go on to the next slide, actually, you'll see our conclusions. While this was a big leap for all of us as a project team and as individuals working on this thing, working on this project, and while we did run into a lot of issues involving technical expertise, technical resources, and information that we required to conduct this project, we feel like through this project we were able to get a better understanding of the uh, overall long-term effects of break and inspect and where the overall um, project would be going if we were to work on this for more than a semester. We also believe that through our research and our uh, dedication to the project, that we believe that we found the best solution was whitelisting in order to break and inspect as it requires very much less effort compared to other forms of break and inspect, which are really, really important because if you don't break and inspect your system, you could easily have viruses and stuff like that where it causes issues. Going on to the next slide, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach back out to us through email or through um, text. Obviously, it really depends on what you guys want to do. Um, thank you again for a great semester. Uh, we appreciate your help. Thanks again. Goodbye.